Hello, footy fans. Welcome to another One Soccer Hangout. It's an, a special one with a couple of York 9 guests. I'm your host, Asa Raymond, along with Oliver Platt and the York 9 players, Jody Chiara and Michael Petrasso. Thanks so much for joining us, guys. And uh, Joe, I have to ask you right away. Last time we were hanging out was at the One Soccer studio. It was you and your boy Manny Aparicio, but now you come on to this show with Michael Petrasso. I just want to make sure that you and Manny are good. There's no jealousy, everything all right, no trouble in paradise, Joe? No, everything's, everything's gravy. But notice the constant. I never change, but you change everything around me. But JD never changes. Yeah, Joe always coming through for us. Uh, Michael, how are you doing? Uh, how's life in isolation? Uh, I'm doing okay. I'm getting pretty bored now. It's been a, it's been a while staying in the house, and uh, you know, you're but being uh, modest. You're being modest, Mike. You're falling apart. Yeah, I'm falling apart over here. Yeah, there we go. I've texted Joe a couple of times saying, "Joe, you heard any news or what?" <laughs> we've right. almost. But, we're gonna go off the edge. I'm gonna. I'm gonna let you guys know. We're gonna go off the edge. We're gonna go off the edge. I'm gonna. I'm gonna lose. I'm losing my mind over here. Yeah. So what's changed then? What's changed from the first week to this past week? Uh, uh, how have your habits changed, Michael? What's going on? Uh, I just think, like, obviously, after the first week, you know, we were just coming. Like, we were still in preseason. So, like, obviously, a little bit more motivated to start the season because we had a, well, a long off season. So, in quickly, and then I guess as a month went by and then another month, it's just kind of like, you know, and obviously having, well, right now we're in a stage where we don't have an end goal. Like, we don't have a, like, a situation, like a date, obviously, our lead. Yeah. So mentally, I just think it, it kind of sits with you. And obviously, you know, we've been working out every day, doing like runs and workouts and slowly as the weeks go by, you know, those drag on and you just kind of want to play yeah. soccer. So I think I'm kind of at the stage now where, you know, we're just kind of waiting to steer something. And I guess mm -hmm. everybody has a lead and not only me as a player, I guess a lot of players are in the same boat. But yeah, I think mentally, you know, it kind of sits on you. So yeah, fans waiting as well. We've been waiting to get back and see you cover some of your games. Uh, you mentioned uh, getting a date. Well, the Bundesliga does have a date. They're returning to play uh, next week. Uh, that's exciting news uh, for, for footy fans who just want to watch some decent soccer. Um, the Croatian League, Turkish League, also set to return at the end of May. Oliver Platt, uh, what will you be watching for? What are you most excited to see uh, with these leagues returning? Um, I'm just excited to see some soccer, but I'm interested to see what it'll look like. And I'd yeah. be interested to get you, your guys' view as players. How, how do you feel about coming back? Do you, are you just desperate to get out and, and play soccer? Or is there any kind of hesitancy there with, with the safety stuff? Uh, how do you guys feel? Go on, Joe. Um, I, I mean, personally, I feel, I feel ready to go. I mean, there's no safety yeah. or... I mean, I, I think at the beginning we were being ca um, cautious and, and, and wary of, of the fact that, you know, the, the virus is around or amongst us. But now I think going through all the, the quarantines and lockdowns, I think it's, I know, I think we can slowly start to get back to some normality. I think that's, that, would, that would be, you know, good. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, well, I think, like, obviously, there's obviously different opinions. You know, a lot of people, like, you know, they view, like, you know, you have to look at this as a safety matter and see, like, you know, there's a lot of people that are passing away due to this virus. And, mm -hmm. you know, sports is, you know, in a way, it's not essential. But I think, you know, we've missed a lot of sports. I think a lot of people, you know, miss watching on TV. And obviously, I'm excited to see the Bundesliga star. You know, I think the whole world's going to tune into the first game of soccer, no matter what country it's in. I think once it's on TV, I think the whole world's excited to see to watch it and obviously for us I think you know if we could see other leagues start and obviously like you said you know you want to see how it's handled and you know how they get on with all the safety measures that need to be done and I think once we can take off that you know maybe we can get going as well you know that's what I'm hoping so I think we all miss kind of kicking the ball around on the field so yeah, yeah and Ollie, I, what about watching without fans um is that going to take away from from your experience uh, as a viewer um, yeah, I don't really know what to expect from it, to be honest. I think there's a few things that we're going to talk about later, how, some of the restrictions that the Premier League are going to yeah. put in place that you don't really know how it's going to change the game and how it's going to affect things. But um, for, so, a, another question for you guys, I, I mm -hmm. um, had the chance to kind of watch you in preseason in I think it was late February, just before things got shut down. And it was pretty intense. The training sessions were very lively. You could definitely notice things that had, had maybe stepped up a bit from last year. Um, how are you guys kind of keeping at that level of fitness and, and preparation for the, for the season, if it does come. 
Um, well, I mean, we, we all have our, 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 I think every team, not just our team, I think we all have, you know, certain or specific, you know, uh, fitness plans that we're all going through, but you, you can only do so much. You can never fully be 100% ready for, you know, a game ready or, you know, training intensity um, ready. But I mean, you get yourself to a certain level. So then when it does start, and I assume it's going to start and we're not going to have a, a long preseason like we would um, normally have. So when we are, when we do jump into it, jump into a quick, we're kind of already at a point where our bodies can, you know, can function uh, to a, to a maximum level. So we're at a certain stage right now where we can, you know, handle, you know, certain training loads and be more prepared for, for games um, scenarios. So, mm -hmm. I mean, everything we do, we try our best to, to emulate a game, but you can only do so much. But I, I think a lot of guys, just want to get back, you know, get back in, onto the field together, get training. And like you said, um, like you said, Ezra, there's, you know, you guys aren't covering us either. So no one's working. So just to get yeah. everybody working yeah. again, too, that's a thing. So, and I've, I've been watching a lot of, you know, political debates, you know, should we get back to work and start the economy or do we, you know, save lives that everyone's kind of torn in between, you know, that's, that's a huge thing. And, and hopefully people would think, okay, you want to save a life, a life is more important. But some people think, well, I can't feed my family. That's important too. So it, it, you're, everyone's just caught in the middle. So it, it's hard. That's the hardest thing to tell. When are we going to start? So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you guys aren't itching to get back out uh, and, and risk it all by getting into some pickup games the way uh, Jordi Reyna was in Vancouver. I don't know if you guys saw that. Did you see that? <laughs> no, I didn't see that. Yeah, so he was, he was caught playing some pickup games. So everyone feeling the itch, obviously. I don't know if you guys sure. saw that. Um, uh, Mike Tyson at 53 sparring with someone as well. So everyone feeling the itch. Uh, uh, what would uh, that first training feel like? Is, have you given that any thought, just getting out there with the mates? What are you most looking forward to? Uh, to be honest, I'm just looking forward to, like, you know, being be on the honest, field with the guy. Mike. Yeah. Be honest, he misses me. Mike misses me. That's what he's looking forward to. He wants to see his big brother. Yeah, you know, I won't lie, man. I, I miss, like, the jokes with the guys. Like, you know, I yeah. had, like, some there good is. friends in the team. And obviously, I met a couple new guys on the team. And we actually bonded a lot during preseason. So, I think, like, you know, I think that's a big factor in soccer, you know. And obviously, I've been stuck in the house with just my brother. So, you know, it gets – after that's a while, you know, you get – <laughs> Oh, at least I yeah. have someone, you know, we played head go. tennis in the backyard, which is not yeah. bad, but so, um, yeah, you know, I'm kind of missed, you know, just being with the guys in the locker room and obviously on the field, but I think it's going to take some getting into, I think, you know, I'm, I would say mm -hmm. going back on your last question, I would say I'm not as fit as I was three weeks into preseason with the York nine, you know, I think obviously being two months off, I would say I'm probably back to the restart and I think you right. probably have to gradually get back into it, which I think a lot of players are, no matter how much we do outside of field going yeah. into an intense training session is way different than going for a 5k run on the trails yeah. outside so that's honest you, know, you gotta get match fit right all right let's uh find out what you guys have been doing go through our first uh the segments our first rapid fire segment so i'll start with you joe what's your go-to quarantine workout um go to it have to be runs just a a, a run yeah. yeah go to just get out there get some fresh air and go for a run and for you, Michael? Yeah, I agree. Just putting the like, music on and just running is probably easier than actually doing push-ups and sit-ups in my basement. So I agree with that. Going for a run is probably the easiest the workout you can do. Not doing the Marco Bustos shirtless workouts oh, that he I've, posted I, on Instagram? I, I've seen Marco Bustos train live, so I don't think I can keep up with Marco Bustos. So I don't even try. <laughs> Go on. I got oh, the whole Wolverine. I got the whole Wolverine look. So I don't think me with my shirt off would... Attracted an audience that boost. <laughs> so. You have your own audience. Yeah. All right, Michael, you can start us on this one. Your go-to quarantine meal. My go-to quarantine meal. At the moment, I probably wake up around 11.30. So my go-to is Nutella on toast with sliced <laughs> bananas on top. So it's not it's not healthy to tell you this that's probably that's probably my every morning routine at the moment <laughs> that's funny that's consistency a good one. um for me whatever the wife is cooking 
She, whatever she cooks. She likes the pasta, so whatever she cooks, I don't complain. All That's right, then, uh, then, Joe, what's your go-to uh, quarantine junk food or snack food? Oh, this is a, there's, this is a big list. I don't know if I have one <laughs> go-to. I mean, uh, I, you know what I do? I have a soft spot for ice cream. I, I do like ice cream, like sorbet or, you know, like kind of fruit-flavored ice cream. I yeah. do love that. Yeah. Uh, I would say Cheetos at the moment. My mom buys like these bags of Cheetos and I just kind of, there's one of those things where if you start, you can't stop. So once I start, I continue going to the whole bag done. But I feel like I, <laughs> I, I can definitely know. quarantine at the Petrasso house. I think that's oh, you would have fun at the Petrasso house. Let me tell you. <laughs> Sounds all right. A lot of entertainment. I've been waiting for my invite. Really. Head tennis when in the I, backyard, Cheetos in Nutella. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you guys got a chance to see I, our our, to- our toilet paper challenge, but you know, even my dad got involved on yeah, the barbecue, yeah. so it's all right. It's not bad over here. That's well, the party right. house. The Petrasso has a party house. <laughs> okay, next one we've got. Uh, what video game are you guys playing to kill the time, if any? Uh, I play Warzone all. The- I think I play it every day. So I have a squad <laughs> that consists of CPL players too. And uh, uh, we play literally okay. eight hours a day. So, and we're actually pretty good. We actually win on a regular basis. <laughs> That's hilarious because it's, it's probably true. He's not lying. He's like, um, who's, who's the best so, player in, in the CPL? Honesty, in all honesty, the best I don't Call of Duty games. player in the CPL uh, would probably yeah. be the new guy in the CPL, actually, James Pantemis. Uh, we okay. play, me, him, and Dylan play all the time together. And um, he's like our, our DP, I would say, to the team. That's what we call him, our DP. <laughs> so he, he wins those games at the moment. So I don't know. I, I throw in KP in there. I think Porter, he's always on his Call of Duty. KP can play <laughs> Call of Duty. You, you'd be surprised. He's the sleeper. I, uh, you saying, I you saw uh, the... Sorry, Joe. Sorry? Yeah, and you're not into the games? No, I, I he's don't not do allowed, He's games. not allowed I... a PS4 at his house. <laughs> Whatever the wife says, she's a boss. No, man. I, we You're were talking man, about Joe. it the other day. Well, yeah, there, there you go. There we go. Um, I was talking to my wife the other day and saying, man, uh, we need some video games. Like, we just, to kill the time. But I know I've never done video games. We do Netflix series. You know, that keeps me busy. It's all right. So what were you going to say, Ollie? Oh, no, I was just going to say uh, that I saw the York 9 FIFA tournament. The new guy, Hamilton, seemed to kind of dominate that one. I don't know if any, either of you guys played. No, but he's good. Play, he's in yeah, the group I chat. Was, was he good. talks yeah. a big game. So he's good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The last one before uh, we move on. I'm sure you guys both have a decent answer for this. Most days in a row you've worn uh, uh, an outfit consecutive, consecutive <laughs> days. That's a good question. <laughs> um i don't know i i change underwear and socks always but i pants i <laughs> i've had the same pair of track pants i oh, always go to guilty the adidas tracks have been yeah, gone yeah, yeah. four or five days i've lost track <laughs> yeah i got nike track pants i i can't i just put them on all the time what are you michael How many yeah days? i would say pro- i'd probably, probably say like yeah three to four days you know, I could stay in my PJs once I wake up, go to bed, same thing, continuously. But <laughs> he never I got nowhere to go, off, so I don't need to go. He never <laughs> takes off that York 9 jacket. See, I, every time <laughs> I see him, he's got that York 9 jacket on. Company man, I respect it. Yeah. All right, well done. We'll get some more roundtable questions a little bit later on. But our next uh, roundtable discussion, this is interesting. Ollie uh, teased it, alluded to it a little bit earlier. Uh, the Premier League, uh, when it comes back, uh, they've talked about banning celebration, team celebration, shirt swapping, obviously gone, spitting as well. Um, yeah, Michael, I want to get your thoughts on this. Uh, well, I haven't, obviously, I don't know, I haven't heard about it, but I think um, I think it's hard to stop team celebrations. I think it's just natural. So I don't know how that's going to work. We can do score and then we're all going to wave at each other from Oh, you distance, guys can get creative, I'm sure. You guys do some like fake oh, we, yeah, stuff, we have you know? a couple of good celebrations <laughs> guess... in mind, but I don't know. It's just, I, yeah, I would guess it's possible. I don't know. It's just a, it's a tough one. I don't know. I don't really yeah. have a too strong of an opinion on it, but Joe, go on. 
Joe, you've got a strong opinion about this. Come on. Um, I don't know. I, I think I'm in the same boat as Mike. It's it's tough. How are you going to stop yell- goal celebrations? Uh, can you explain that? Can you explain the spitting? What is that like? Can you say that again? Is it like just, what do you mean? What do they mean by spitting? Just no spitting at all. Like obviously not an like, opponent. Like a habit, like just when on, a player like walks yeah, and just on the ground, like onto the ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that'd be a tough that. one to regulate as well. Yeah. But how do you stop sweat? Like sweat comes off you onto the ground. Same thing, no. Well, that's the thing. Like, uh, even just like thinking about situations like a corner that creates yeah. a big crowd, right? Like the same as a, a celebration would look like. So I don't really know how this kind of thing is practical. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like when you mark on a corner, yeah. uh, you're supposed to what? Like, you know, keep your arm distance and touch them and stuff like that. It's the same thing as celebrating, really, when you give a high five. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. There's all yeah, kinds of things. It's gonna be a like... tough one to enforce. Yeah, and you would think if everyone's tested that you know the the pitch is safe right so it's it's a bit of a strange one but uh we'll see yeah it is odd i I think it's one of those situations where they want to control as much as they can so it's all about optics so maybe that's uh they're at a point right now where they're just discussing uh what the game might look like when it returns but but you said it all yeah i can't see too much changing in the regular field of play because then you're you're altering the game right there's going to be contact throughout and you can't really change what people are doing and i I do find it hard to regulate, especially if there is someone who has to spit on a field. What happens then? What's what's the call? What's the infraction? Is it a yellow? Yeah. <laughs> It'll be fascinating <laughs> to see what happens. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. You guys aren't changing your habits, though, when you t- return to the game. I imagine that, uh, Joe, you're going to be a crunching tackler once things resume once again. Yeah, it's, uh, things don't change. When when that whistle goes, it's we're back to normal. So things don't change for me. Uh, actually, speaking of goal celebrations, guys, we've got two of the the CPL's best penalty takers here. Um, who's taking them for York Nine this this season? I'm a gentleman. It's all Mikey. <laughs> no problem. Mikey's uh, you can take them all. It doesn't matter to me. I was gonna say myself anyway. So thanks. There for you go. Them. See. There you go. <laughs> see. That's why I'm well liked. I'm just a nice guy. I <laughs> I put everyone else before myself. Yeah. That's tough. Michael, it seems like you're fitting into the team fairly well. Uh, how frustrating has this break been? What was it like to join York Nine, uh, you know, get a little acclimated with the team and then have things shut down? Um, yeah, what was the experience like coming into the season? Uh, yeah, well, I knew like a, a couple of the players on the team already going in and then I kind of like, well, I knew of them and, you know, I met them like personally, obviously when my first day and moving forward, but I know they've been very welcoming to me. Uh, you know, I've got along with a lot of the players and, you know, especially going away, like we had the opportunity to go away for two weeks and we roomed like four to a room and it was me, Chris, Joe and KP. And we bonded actually really well, you know, like we weren't like in our own rooms. We kind of like chilled in the living room and we talked and, you know, we all got along. So like I felt very comfortable, obviously, after the first four weeks. And, you know, like I was starting to learn, like obviously the coaching is implementing their style of play and, you know, trying to teach me it. And, you know, I think, uh, you know, obviously just having a break obviously just kind of puts distance on things, you know, I haven't mm-hmm. like, you know, we don't speak as much. We text once in a while, but, you know, I think, uh, you know, going back, I think everything will go back into flow of things like it was before, but you no, know, I've actually enjoyed my first month, I would say with uh, York now, you know, they've been very welcoming to me and it's been good so far. You were kind of uh, all over the pitch for, for Valor last season, Michael, you played some wing back striker winger, obviously. Uh, do you kind of think you're maybe going to stick in one position a bit more this year or do you still want to be that versatile player? Uh, I think, uh, you know, the coach mentioned to me, like, you know, I still be more versatile, uh, you know, moving up around the front three and, you know, into the midfield. Uh, I think last season, obviously, I was utilized a lot around the field. And, you know, I think, uh, obviously, you know, I've played in many different positions at, the time, at times in my career. So I think, you know, I know them pretty well and I just kind of, need to do my job, you know, whatever the coach wants to put me, you know, I can play and, you know, I like, obviously I like, you know, going forward and creating chances. So we can do that anywhere on the field, I feel. So, yeah. Yeah. York nine has been one of the most interesting clubs coming into this season. Um, good young players last year, a decent year uh, overall, but probably could have done a little bit better. You might agree, Joe. Um, how exciting is it to have uh, Michael Petrasso uh, join this group? And what do you think he has to the table? Oh, for sure. Um, I, you know, Mikey, he, he brings a lot of experience and knowledge from the game, from his past where he's played. He's you know, a good attacking player, which, you know, we, we needed because, mm-hmm. you know, we lost, we lost a lot of our attacking threats 
from last year. So to, to add a, a, an attacking threat like Mike, it's, it's important for us. You know, we can create goals, score goals. And um, just, just being a leader on the field is huge as well. Yeah. All right, uh, let's get back to our quarantine questions. Uh, another uh, rapid fire segment. So I'm going to go to Joe once again. Uh, put you on the spot here. Who would be the best teammates to be in quarantine with? The best teammate. Um, Michael's just praying it's him right now. I just head down. <laughs> uh, you know what? He doesn't I'd want to like be. to be. <laughs> I'd like to be at the Patrasso household, Cheetos and Nutella every day. That'd be pretty That's cool. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what about Manny Aparicio? No. Oh. Yeah. See, there. You know what? I. I Manny. I hopefully Manu's there. not watching, but no, I, I Manu. <laughs> Like a whole bunch of the guys. I yeah. couldn't pick one. I just couldn't pick one. It'd be, it's too tough. What about you, Michael? Anyone stand up? Uh, is it a teammate on the York Nine or is it? No, anybody? no, no. Any, anybody you, you would have played with. Uh, yeah. Uh, you anybody I would have played with in this situation, it'd probably have to be Dylan, my best friend. And obviously, uh, we've lived together for years before. So we obviously know how each other are. And it'd probably be easier to to get along with him for months and months trapped in a house. So, yeah, that's who I would pick if I were to pick somebody. Dylan Carrillo, by the way, right. just in case. Right. Yeah. Uh, flipping, so, yeah. flipping that one, guys, the worst teammate to self-isolate with. Oh, this is good. <laughs> oh, this is oh, tough. The worst teammate. Oof. I mean, she's not on my team. My wife is tough to quarantine <laughs> with. <laughs> <laughs> the missus is a tough one, especially if you lost. into a, um, the worst teammate. I don't know if there's a worst teammate. I, I, I it's, a, it's a tough one. Anyone who's, anyone who's maybe a little too loud or just, you, you know, too, or even too uh, quiet. I think just because we're very different people, I think Emilio, we, me and him would be on the complete <laughs> different page. Like, He's a complete different personality than mine. So probably Emmy. Not because I don't like him, just because yeah. we're probably so different. Fair enough. Maybe a great sitcom, uh, though. I'd watch that. Yeah, like Joe Emmy. Is, Emmy's a character. So yeah. I don't know if we could get along at quarantine. <laughs> Michael, anyone come to mind? Uh, what well, I don't know. Worst team. I don't really have any worse one. I would say maybe just because, you know, I had some, you know, I think we'd probably get up to the most trouble and we probably wouldn't, because uh, I remember a story, me and James, uh, we are in Montreal and we went on a away trip. I can't say where, because obviously, you know, and we got an extra TV put into our room and we bought candy and I think we video gamed all night together. So I think if we, I think if, it's a good point. I think if we were roommates, I think the workload of working out and stuff would probably be negative. So I think that'd probably be the worst. <laughs> person to have i think i come back overweight if i that's a good way to look at it so nice all right joe what's the first thing you're gonna do when the quarantine is lifted the first thing oof. um you know what me and my wife were talking go to a nice restaurant yeah. a little date night oh. yeah i told you to add that into your schedule yeah one date night a month yeah. you know what i mean yeah so one date night a month time. I was going to start one date night, but it's gotten halted. So I got to, mm. so a date night a month. That'll be very good for my, for my wife. It's the barbershop for me. No doubt. No questions. First thing oh, I've, been, yeah. I've been bugging yeah. him every two or three days. Um, yes, so, yeah, yeah. Anxiously waiting for that. Uh, what, if you, what about for you, Michael? First thing I'm going to do. Um, well, it depends when, but uh, one of my best friends lives about 15 minutes away. His name's Emmanuel, not in the soccer world, but, uh, mm -hmm. and, you know, I always used to go, go hang out at his house. So I'd probably go hang out there, you know, it'd be nice to see my friends and just talk and, you know, obviously yeah. get out of the house. I think a lot of people are missing their friends and not just simple things, phone, right? So, yeah, just the simple yeah. things I think I'd start with. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right. Uh, last one. What's the last thing you guys will want to do after this is, is all over? Or well, the thing you'll miss the least, I guess, is another way of putting it. The thing I'll miss the uh, least. The thing I'll miss the least. So probably being it, it, at home. Yeah. I'll probably spend yeah. 24 hours not at home. <laughs> yeah. 
I yeah, know I every I know every inch of my condo now. <laughs> Probably take every excuse to not come home on the nights I go yeah. out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So just be out anywhere. Agreed. Agreed. Just be out. Yeah, I agree with that. All right. Uh, another uh, uh, roundtable discussion. It's really mostly for Michael, though. Uh, we want to know after uh, that season with with Valor. It was a tough one, I know. Uh, you chose to come back to, to York 9 or come home for yourself to York 9. Why did you make that decision? Um, I think it was always in my head. I think, uh, obviously, I played away for a long time. Mm -hmm. And obviously, coming back to CPI, I first went to Valor. And obviously, I think it was a good decision. I think I, I knew Rob personally before yeah. I went to Valor. And obviously, coming off a rough season in Montreal, I think my confidence was shot. And I was in a dark place, I would say, at the time. And, you know, Rob has this uh, personality that brings the best out of you. And I think that's one of the best things in his coaching is that he's the type of guy that you can go to. And, you know, before games, he just drives me with confidence. And, like, you know, even though I had a couple of injuries last season, I think in the games I did play, you know, I went out there and I was explosive. And, you know, he kind of brought that out of me and I knew he would. And I think, like, you know, obviously doing that for me. And I think I had, like, you know, quite a good season last season with Valor. And, but obviously, like, playing in the CPL I think you know this league's just starting and I want to like obviously it's going to grow and I want to be a major part of that and I think you know playing for York region is where I'm from and my family here and I remember the the first game I played at York 9 my whole family got that tent I don't know if you know the two tents behind the goal at York region my yeah. whole family was in one of the tents and I remember and I scored and like everybody was there I just kind of like a feeling you know that I never had obviously and I think you know that when it first started then obviously talking to Jimmy and, you know, you told me that Paul was coming in and Paul coached me on the national team uh, with Octavio. And, you know, that was when I was starting for our men's team. And, you know, those were like good parts in my career. So I think, you know, I think uh, coming back, you know, that played a major influence as well. And, you know, I think, you know, I'm just starting off. I'm happy to be here. And I, you know, obviously all those things come into play and, you know, going throughout the winter and off season, you know, it's one of my goals was to play for York 9. It was my, I think it was my option that I wanted to play in the CPL was to play for York Nine. So. Yeah, yourself, uh, Paul Solteri, you mentioned is two of the uh, bigger acquisitions for York Nine uh, coming into this season. Joe, why does York Nine have uh, a chance to challenge uh, for the title this year? I, I think if we can build off a lot of the positive things we did uh, last year, I, I, it would be huge. I think the acquisitions that we've brought in, uh, uh, with Mike and uh, Chris, and uh, some of the international players, the exciting international players that we have, um, uh, the knowledge from Paul and uh, his his experience that he brings along is it brings along is huge as well. Mm -hmm. So I think mm -hmm. you know those those pieces, um, and if we can build off last year, I I think we do have we are heading in the right direction and we do have a chance. I I, I mean we weren't far off we were, we weren't far off from yeah. from last yeah. year. So I mean, if if we can just you know stay focused on on some of the some of the things that we that we need to work on, uh, some of the consistency game in game out, I I, I think we, we we you know have uh, one foot in the door. Mm -hmm. At at challenging, at challenging for the top. Yeah. What are those things that you need to work on? Uh, what was the message from Jimmy Brennan coming into this season to uh, to make it better than than, than last year, Joe? Well, I think I think a lot of things, you know, I, I think a few games last year, I maybe our approach uh, as a team, you know, I felt maybe we just, we lacked a little bit of concentration, a little bit of professionalism, you know, as a team, as a collective group and a few games, you know, a few results really hurt us. And, 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 and I, I think if we can, you know, change that maybe mentality, you know, Paul really stresses, that you know a, a huge uh, maybe a shift in the intensity in training you know not that uh, that we weren't intense last year but just if we want to win just having that winning mentality that 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 winning training intensity every day you know I think that's huge and we brought on you know a few more experienced pros this year and um, I think I think that's what's that's what's going to push us in the right direction uh, yeah like I would say like Obviously, I didn't wasn't here last year, yeah. so I don't like camp based on like personal experiences. But obviously, playing against York Nine, you know, they were well against us, you know, possession based team, and they kept the ball really well, and you know, they had a lot of chances. And obviously, Telfer was one of their main players last year and scoring goals, and they were a big threat. And I thought, 
you know, obviously last season, I know I've heard a lot of the talk shows and, you know, Calgary and forwards were kind of above everybody else last season, I would say. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I think like this season, you know, obviously I think a lot of teams were trying to build around to try to compete at that level. And I think, you know, with the players we brought in, like, uh, I know Chris a long time and I think he's very like, um, like I would say like he's a big, big player to come into the lead. And I think, um, uh, Joe to can see in training like him as a six he gives a lot of salt like solid in the back I think he'll play a major role and hoping obviously with uh, the internationals like we obviously we haven't seen much of them obviously coming in but you know we've heard a lot of good things and you know we can be a, a good threat this year obviously I mm-hmm. have to learn Joe would know more but you know I think uh, you know I think we're all gonna go out and try to compete to, to win it so yeah, Michael, um, just before we, we finish up here, we, we've spoken to a few guys who were on Valor last year who have gone to a new club now, uh, Bustos, Belangoya, Sacramento. Uh, and they all seem to kind of have a different perspective about what happened with, with Valor last year and maybe where it fell down for a, what was a, a decently talented group of players, especially up front with, with you guys. Um, how do you kind of reflect on, on that year now and, and look back on it? Uh like, I think, like, you know, I think um, people, like, I think our team last year, I would say, like, we were a good team. I just think we were more individually rounded than we were togetherness. I think we had a lot of good individual players. And I think um, as a team, we couldn't really come together and play as a team. Like, I think, like, you know, there's a lot of games I remember coming to the locker room at halftime. And, you know, it just be like throw a towel over my head because we'd be down 3-0 by half. And then I think in situations like that as a team, the game's not usually won in the first half. It's usually won in the second half. And I think, you know, we have the players like Bustos is undoubtedly one of the best players in the league. And I think, you know, if our team could have held together a certain time through difficult times and kept the game at 1-0, you know, or 0-0, we had the players to win the games. Yeah. I just think a lot of the season we couldn't get there. Like, as you can see, we were down to Calgary 3-0 at half and it gets explodes. And, you know, I think, like – our coaching staff is very good. And I think like Rob, like, you know, brought a lot of the best out of our players, but I just think as a group together, defensively, we couldn't keep it solid enough to let our attacking players like explode, like explode. And I think in games, some games we did, some games we won. And, you know, those games like there where Bustos would score two, you know, I was for one late. And these are games that we know we, we win the game, but I think all together as a team, we weren't up to the level of Calgary and Forge. I would say undoubtedly Calgary and Forge were the best. I think just not maybe not individually, but as a group, they were above everybody else. And I remember going into games against them. It was kind of like, yeah, we want to win here. We're going to give it our all. But, you know, you have that slide in your mind. We're like, I don't know if we can compete with them. And it it showed every game we play, you know what I mean? Like we park the bus and they have all the possession and we just hope and we hope and we hope. And I think we can't be in a situation going into games like that. And I don't think it's anybody's fault. I just think as a group, we weren't as good as them. And I think this year, obviously I look at the recruitments for a lot of teams. I think Valor has gone a lot better. So I think they will be a better team this year than they were last year. You know, they lost a lot of good individual players. Like for example, Bustos, I think undoubtedly could be the best player in the league. And I think obviously losing him is major, but I think they've grown in areas where they needed more than just having one player up front to like win a game. And I think like as a team, I think you need to look at it as an all around pitcher than having just three individual players that can carry you because when it comes down to it, you need to be into the games to get those players, you know, their chance. So I think yeah. as a team, we weren't as good as the level of the lead last year. But I think this year they will be. And I think a lot of teams have improved this year. So I think the lead will be better, if obviously, once we get started. So. Yeah, yeah, but, I yeah. agree for sure. Yeah, Valor wasn't the only team uh, trying to find their identity throughout last season. You mentioned outside of uh, Calgary and, and Forge, uh, it was really tough for a lot of the teams to, to figure things out in that first year. Uh, so we're excited to, to see York 9 and, and the other seven teams get going here. Uh, that brings us to our final rapid fire segment. So before we wrap things up here, and uh, Joe, I need to know, um, with now eight teams in the league, where would you like to see the next CPL team end up? The next CPL team. I have a lot of family in Kelowna, so Kelowna would okay. be a great nice. spot. Yeah. Yeah, I got And I've been Thank there a few market. times, and it's, and it's beautiful. I love Kelowna. It's beautiful there, so. But it, for sure, it, 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 yeah, Kelowna. But it, there's got to be one in Quebec. There's got to be a Quebec team, one in there for sure. Yeah. Michael, you, you played Michael? in, in Quebec. Do you think they, they're ready for another team? Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, I think so. I think Montreal is, you know, they got that ignorance, I would say, as a team, you know, and I guess especially against Toronto, I think, you know, that'd make another good rivalry for all the teams based in Ontario. So I think, plus they are obviously, I think they'd have a good fan base, whether it's in Quebec City or in Montreal. I think, the, you know, they come out, for example, Blaineville, look at the quality they had last season, obviously showing in the mm-hmm. CPA, the Canadian Championship. So I think there are players out there and I think that's a good city to start. Mm-hmm. For sure. Uh, I'm right, rooting for Kelowna, though. I like that shout, Joe. <laughs> yeah, Kelowna. Kelowna, for sure. Yeah, let's go with Kelowna. Uh, let's see if we can push that into the commissioner. There you go. That's right. That's what we're best. all about here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, next one is the veteran player anywhere in the world you'd like to see come to the CPL? A DP, I Ooh, guess. You veteran could say. player. Yeah. A DP. A big DP. Wow. Um, Go on, Joe. <laughs> who, who could it be? I, you know what? I know it's, it's probably unlikely that it's ever going to happen, but because Juve's my team and Ronaldo's playing on Juve, that would be pretty cool. Yeah, I like that. As a DP player, um, I don't know. I would like to say maybe... Oh, maybe like Wayne Rooney. I'm a big fan of Wayne Rooney, so I knew I you know, knew he was gonna if, say if, Wayne Rooney. If you can fit, if you can right. finish his career off with one year, maybe even like a three month span over here in the CPL would be nice, I think, for a lot of Canadians. So yeah. I knew you were gonna say Wayne Rooney. <laughs> All right, next one, Michael. Who's your favorite? Who's your favorite player growing up? Oh, well, I, Wayne Rooney is my favorite player. It used to be like it's my always, MSN always profile picture. That's always been Rooney, yeah. and I actually got a chance to play against him, so I was honored. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And you got his jersey. Come on. Let, let the people yeah, know. And I got a jersey. There was we that, go. Was that Montreal or QPR? Yeah. Montreal against yeah. DC United. I actually ran to him as fast as I could to get his jersey. <laughs> that guy. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Joe, who do you want to, who's your favorite player growing up? Um, favorite player, Alessandro Del Piero. Nice. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, the Ollie, career... who's your favorite player? My favorite player growing up was probably yeah. David Beckham. Yeah. Ah, be. Yeah. That's, that's pretty good. That's good. Uh, the career you would have pursued if not for soccer. Oh, I get asked this all the time. Um, the career I would pursue. You know what? I'm a tough, hardworking labor man. I'm construction all day. <laughs> nice. I, I got construction in my blood. That's what I do. I, I, I build things. Mikey uh, Joe, and I are I'm, uh, replacing, I'm replacing the floor in my house, so I might need you to come over once the quarantine is done. Give me a call, out. no problem. Tiles, hardwoods, yeah. vinyls, I'd do it. That's such a good ad. <laughs> 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 what about for you, Michael? What will you be doing? Uh, I have no idea. I've actually been thinking about this a lot recently. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know the- he doesn't know if he's going to play again. <laughs> so That's the way I was duty. feeling a week ago. Eight hours a day um, on Call of Duty, you could probably go pro. Uh, no, I'm not that good. I'm like the garbage man <laughs> on the team. Don't worry. <laughs> I carry the healables for the team and the guns. So. That's important. Too. Um, I would, I don't know. I asked, I think um, one of my uncles, a cop, and he's been mentioning to me that maybe when I retire, I can, he can put my name in and go in there. He says it's a good shift, good hour job to go and play basketball. So, I don't know. I was thinking of that, but I, I don't know. I, I, to be honest, I couldn't answer that question right now in my life of what I would be without soccer. So, Okay, the last one, one now might be... What was that? Well, you got a one soccer pundit. That's a, that's a yeah. career for you. <laughs> if you guys think I'm doing a pretty good job, maybe. Yeah, you know, yeah. You for, sure, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the last one. This might spark a debate between the two of you. Um, tougher country to play in England or Russia Joe you go first oh that's easy for sure Russia <laughs> they they don't make them they, those 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 Russians are a different breed how's your Russian Joe uh, um it's okay I mean I haven't I haven't yeah. talked Russian in a while but I still you know I still remember a few words it's not bad that's <laughs> Better than mine. Uh, yeah, Michael, playing in England can't be easy. Come on. No, there's a lot of. Well, my experiences are more in the lower leagues, like League One, 
you know, like those leagues. And there's like 46 games a season with cups, like five, four different cups. There's a lot of games, but I think England is the best country in the world to play soccer. So, you know what I mean? Whether it's easier or not easier than Russia, because I have no idea what Russia is like, to be honest. So, <laughs> but uh, so, I would prefer to play England over Russia any day. What's your fondest memory of playing there, Mike? My fondest memory was probably when I was on loan at Oldham. Yeah. Uh, we drew Liverpool in the FA Cup and we played at Anfield, actually. And I remember sitting in the dressing room. Uh, I don't know if you've ever watched the documentary, the Barcelona one that came out, and the players were sitting in the dressing room before they played at Anfield and you can hear the sound, like the, them singing the yeah, song. Right. Yeah. And I remember sitting there and I remember the stadium. It just felt like it was shaking. And I remember sitting there and I remember my legs shaking so bad where the coach turned to me and he goes, are you okay? And I went, yeah. And then he goes like, you don't look okay. You look nervous. <laughs> and I said, I am nervous. And I remember going out and the first, I think it was the first time I ever played in like that big of a stadium. And the first 10 minutes, all I could see were the flickering lights. I don't even think I could see the ball. And I remember wow. just running around for 20 minutes without touching the ball. Obviously, we were playing against Liverpool, so we didn't touch the ball anyway. But I think it was probably my best memory as a, a soccer player to this day. That's great. That game, so. nice. And hey, that sounds pretty tough. Joe, you might have you beat there. Anything from Russia compete with that? Um, no, I, I didn't play against Liverpool, but I think just, you know, probably my first, my first pro start was probably my, um, my fondest memory. Mm -hmm. So I got my first start was in, uh, was in Chechnya and Grozny, not the nicest place in the world. Wow. Wow. But yeah. Wow. But, um, yeah, that was my first start. So as a pro, so that was probably my fondest memory driving to the game and there's tanks on the road. <laughs> yeah That's that part of the wild. world it's not the safest yeah um all right uh looks like that's oh we do have one more final question from our uh, youtube channel uh youtube plates uh, which is a better club woodbridge strikers or von azuri <laughs> who wrote that question i gotta know who wrote that question <laughs> That sounds like it's getting a little personal. <laughs> sounds like it is. Lobo yeah. plates, YouTube. Yeah, I mean, I, I got to say Vaughn. I play for Woodbridge, so I got to go for Woodbridge. <laughs> yeah. It's, you know, once you join Vaughn, there's an old saying, once you join Vaughn, you never really leave. That's the thing. You're always there. <laughs> that's good. That's a way, that's a good place to end it before we start a fight between you guys because it started out so harmonious. Everything was good. I want to make sure we ended here. It was, uh, it was great chatting with you guys both. Uh, Joe, Michael, wish you all the best uh, once the season resumes thank for uh, Oliver Platts, myself, and the rest of the One Soccer family. I want to thank everyone for watching. We're back on the Hangout tomorrow. Gareth Wheeler's back inside the game. Special guest tonight, Landon Donovan. Should be a great one. Uh, you don't want to miss that. Uh, Till next time, see ya. <laughs>